there's a lot that's been written about what is usually called the rhetorical presidency. Some people think that this is a very important part of the office and a good thing. Some scholars think that this is a bad thing, and let me explain why. From the, if you're in the good category, you think, well, we have a deliberative democracy. And that means that the framers gave us a system of government that expects public participation, civic engagement. And so for the president to speak more directly to the American public, that's actually a good thing. That's part of this constitutional design. For people who think that it's a bad thing, it's because the framers were also concerned about the president having too much popular power. They didn't want a demagogue in the office. And so some scholars in the 1980s started writing about how this was bad for our system of government. This was a constitutional aberration. The presidents were taking more power than they should have because they could speak to the American public in a way that no other politician could. Probably not the best day to use a Speaker of the House as an example, but as powerful as a Speaker of the House may be, that person doesn't have the bully pulpit access that a president does because the Speaker of the House represents their district and then they're, if they're in the majority party, that party in the House chamber. Nothing compares to the presidency. And so for some who are concerned about this, then their argument would be that this throws out of balance the checks and balances within the Constitution, the fact that we have three uh, equal branches of government.